Hello, info person. This is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a relatively famous or technically infamous pinwheel nebula somewhere in the galaxy that actually went viral a few years back because some of the initial observations and some of the initial studies actually suggested that one day this particular nebula is going to create something super dangerous for planet Earth. But now, after years of observations and because of the new study, we actually have some really exciting new discoveries and new evidence that whatever is happening inside this nebula seems to be even more bizarre than previously believed. And so today, let's discuss WR104 that media has previously referred to as the Death Star for the reasons we're going to be discussing right now. But I guess first, so what exactly is this and what are these pinwheel nebula? Because this is actually not the only object. As a matter of fact, we've discussed quite a few in the past with some of the images even observed by the James Webb in a lot of detail. And in essence, these can also be referred to as Wolf Raya Nebula. Or basically nebula formed by some of the brightest and some of the most powerful stars in the entire universe. Really massive stars that are usually so bright and produce so much light pressure that they basically start to blow apart completely, releasing huge amounts of gas in the process. This is actually something that happens to stars either when they're super old, about to go supernova, or sometimes when they're actually really young. But as a result, they usually produce very beautiful nebula, visible from very far away. But they also have a tendency to not be alone. As a matter of fact, these stars are very often born with a partner, usually a much smaller star, sometimes an O-type star, that can actually create a lot of bizarre effects as it orbits the more massive Wolf Raya. And usually this results in a nebula that doesn't appear spherical, but instead appears a little bit deformed. And specifically because one of the stars here is actually spewing out a lot of dust, but the other star disturbs it through additional stellar winds. And as these stars interact with one another, and also as they orbit around one another, the collision between their stellar winds ends up producing a lot of beautiful emissions and also produce something that appears as a spiral, which is essentially what we actually see in many different locations in the galaxy. And so this is all a result of the orbit and the interaction of the stellar wind, with the dust spiraling outwards due to the rotation of the system. And these stellar winds are actually super exciting and also extremely important, mostly because this is enormous amount of dust, but also because this interaction produces extremely complex molecules and just generally a lot of chemical interactions. As a matter of fact, these powerful winds produce many carbon-rich molecules and a lot of hydrocarbon dust that then enriches the entire galaxy and ends up in a lot of different star systems millions and billions of years afterwards. And so technically this is also a kind of a carbon-based fountain. A fountain that enriches the entire galaxy, and because a lot of these molecules are technically carbon-based, technically this is also the fountain of life, producing many different molecules that eventually ended up inside of us. And so these molecule collisions produce this beautiful formation visible in the infrared, with the actual spin of the spiral usually depending on the orbit between the two stars. And while in 1999, the WM Keck Observatory discovered yet another one of these spirals, but this one was kind of different. Because this was the 104th Wolf Raya star, it became known as WR104, but these new images were somewhat unusual. Mostly because the shape of the spiral in this case basically implied that this particular star system was inclined almost directly face on toward us. Or in other words, the rotational axis of this binary system was directed approximately toward our own planet. And though at first this was kind of ignored, within just a few years researchers actually started to ring the alarm. And that's basically for one important reason. At least one of these stars, or possibly even both of these stars, had a slight chance to produce gamma ray bursts. Okay, let's quickly go through this as well. Now first, you might want to check out one of the previous videos in the description about the brightest gamma ray burst we've ever seen, the one that was only discovered in 2022. But here, even though this particular gamma ray burst happened billions of light years away from planet Earth, in a galaxy far, far away, it was actually able to affect the atmosphere of the planet, changing it enough that its effects were very similar to a typical solar flare. And that was of course because it was ridiculously powerful. And it also lasted a really long time, approximately 7 minutes. But once again, this was really far away, billions of light years away from us, in a barely visible galaxy you see right here. And though we're still not entirely clear how exactly gamma ray bursts are formed and why they seem to happen sometimes and not other times, one of the major implications from this discovery was that 
Here we had two stars whose orbital parameters suggested that if one of these stars does go supernova, and they certainly will in the future, there was actually a chance that one of them might also create a local gamma ray burst, but not billions of light years away, only 8400 light years away from us. And if in this case this gamma ray burst is pointed at us, that might become a bit of a problem. The extinction type of a problem. Which is of course why the star received a new nickname, the Death Star. But despite the name, there were still obviously a lot of uncertainties. The first one was quite obvious. Even though we know the Wolf Rea star and the O-type star will go supernova, and possibly within the next few tens of thousands of years, it's not certain that any one of them will produce any gamma ray burst or even any powerful emissions going toward our planet. Likewise, it was also not entirely certain what inclination these stars had, and if it was actually 0 degrees or something closer to maybe 10 degrees, which technically would not be as big of a deal even if there was a gamma ray burst produced, because in that case it's just going to miss the planet and will not even be visible from planet Earth. And that's because these jets are usually extremely focused. And so here there was just a lot of uncertainty. But nevertheless, there was still that small risk. And the risk was actually big enough for a lot of researchers to focus on the star for many, many years. And we actually talked about some of the recent discoveries in one of the videos in the description. But now we have this new research that finally answers most of the questions. And presents us with a completely new mystery that currently has no answer. And so let's discuss this new study by G.M. Hill, who used the observations from the WM Keck Observatory and several additional instruments such as low-resolution imaging spectrometer, a shell spectrograph and imager, and the near-infrared spectrograph in order to finally confirm exactly what's happening and if we should basically be worried at all. And it's really the spectrographic observations that make this study so different, because in this case the researcher actually focused on the stars in order to determine their exact motion around one another. In other words, he basically disregarded some of the previous assumptions about their orbit and about the inclination that seems to be visible by observing the spiral. And so here, by measuring this spectra directly, it became possible to determine exact velocities for these two stars, which allowed the researcher to work out their exact orbits and exact inclination, with the observations definitively confirming the period. Basically here, the orbit takes 241 days and it seems to be almost entirely circular, but also discovering something really strange. The inclination was actually not 0 degrees, but very likely between 34 degrees to maybe even 45 degrees. In other words, the stars were not pointed at us at all, and the orbit was actually quite inclined. And because of this tilt of at least 34 degrees, it almost certainly ruled out any potential danger to planet Earth. Even if there is a gamma ray burst in the future, it's not going to point at us at all. It's just going to go in a completely different direction. And once again, that's because these jets always travel along the rotational axes in two opposite directions. They cannot travel toward us at all. But the previous assumption that was based on the observations of the spiral now basically created a bit of a mystery, because here, this actually suggested that in the spinwheel star, the star's orbit and the dust spiral were for some reason tilted toward one another. Or essentially, this unusual spiral seemed to be produced in a way we cannot possibly explain right now. Something else is happening in the system that produces the spiral inclined toward us, while the stars seem to be inclined in a different direction. In this case, the study doesn't actually provide any explanations, just a new mystery. But because of this particular discovery, the scientists in the study also suggest that we need to reinvestigate other spirals, or basically take another look at a lot of these other pinwheel stars, in order to work out their exact inclination, but to also maybe find a way to explain this, because right now it just doesn't make sense. Nevertheless, these new observations essentially recalculate everything. And so here we have a Wolf Rea star that's maybe about 13 solar masses in mass and is throwing out huge amounts of material, and we have an O-type star that's maybe 30 solar masses that will very likely survive a little bit longer, but will also go supernova in the next million years. And for some reason, their interaction, or specifically the solar wind interaction, produces a tilted dust spiral that for all we know might actually be a very common occurrence, it's just never really been seen before. And here, a lot of this was confirmed by detecting a lot of carbon and helium, with very specific lines that are known to be produced through various colliding winds. And so the actual observations were pretty accurate. But because in this case, this is pretty far away from us, over 8000 light years away, and because both stars are still pretty stable, even if there is a supernova in the next 10,000 years, it's basically just going to appear as a bright star 
and have practically no effect on the planet. Which I guess kind of downgrades the star from being potentially dangerous to a typical pinwheel star. But naturally, assuming that something similar happens around other pinwheel stars, maybe this also means that some of the other inclinations could potentially be facing us after all. And so once there are some additional discoveries, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. And until then, I guess looks like you're gonna have to go to school or to work tomorrow after all, because no gamma ray burst is going to be causing extinction anytime soon. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye